everywhere. The winds are whispering in the trees. La da 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 da. And the message of each mountain breeze is welcome to the hills. La la da da da. And above, the birds are singing on their way. La da 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 da. And the message that they seem to say is welcome to the hills. Though you may be a stranger, treated like a friend, you're made to feel at home. Flowers will not have reaching, and every pine will bend. You never want to roam from the hills. Where winds are whispering in a dream. La, 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 la. And the message of each mountain breeze is welcome to the hills. Seems like somebody's in difficulty. <laughs> Kit. Where are you from? Twin Oaks. Bad there now. In winter, five men killed. Who killed them? Trappers of Big Jim Foster and Bob Runnels. Why? Trap lines of Runnels and Foster raided. Each say other do it. Then fight, she starts. Jim Spring? Big Jim Foster's cabin burned. Fur's gone. Him want to get revenge. I guess the inspector was right about that feud. Well, I had an uncle in Kentucky, so I know just how to handle these feuding boys. We'll camp around here somewhere and this chap gets better. Then we'll head for Twin Oaks. No, no, you'll go back. We're here tonight. <laughs> Come on here now. Sit down there, rest a while. Be lucky, get away once. Maybe so, no next time. we cut the price. This time, they would be too easily traced. You can hold them a couple of months, can't you? You expect Reynolds and Foster to rub each other out by then, eh? That'll depend on the raven. If he lives up to the reputation you've given him... He will. He's the most cold-blooded killer I've ever seen. Your biggest worry is to see that the feud doesn't get too hot. Because you have the mounted police clamping down on you. No. There haven't been any mounties in this part of the country for years. What about the deal? Well, I got a couple of stops to make down to the border. Let it ride till I get back. We'll see how things shape up by then. Everywhere the winds are whispering in the trees. And the message of each mountain breeze 
Welcome to the hills. La 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 la. And the birds, the birds are singing on their way. La 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 la. la. And the message that they seem to say is welcome to the hills. Ooh, yeah. Though you may be a stranger, you're treated as a friend. You're made to feel at home. Flowers will nod a greeting, and every pine will bend. You'll never want to roam from the hills, where winds are whispering in a dream. La 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 la, and each message of the mountain breeze is welcome to the hills. business, isn't it, stranger? Taking somebody else's horse? My horse broke his leg and I needed one. I didn't know I belonged to a Mountie. Recognize this fellow, Pat? No. Well, you ought to. His picture's been posted at the barracks for weeks. That's the Raven. The Raven? Well, for goodness sake, am I glad to see you. I never laid eyes on him. Has he ever seen you? No. What do the initial CR stand for? What do you think? We've been looking a long time for you. Didn't you make a slight mistake in judgment when you crossed the border? <laughs> a slight mistake in judgment? He's going to put his neck right in the rope for murder. Pat, you head back to the post of the prisoner. I'll go on to Twin Oak and get back as soon as you can. All right, I'll get back and take the ten years. Come on now, kid. No more back, boy. Come along, she is. <laughs> I think we're running in luck, huh? I'll say you are. Pick up. Have another. Thanks. I like to have you foster boys in my place. I'll tell that Bob Reynolds right now. You watch him. Hey, you. 
That is my money, monsieur. What do you mean, your money? You are gambling with money you got from stealing our furs. That's a lie. see a lot of each other. Read that, and things might look different to you. I don't know anything about this. Sure? Positive. Are you slim? No. Now let's get down to cases. You sent for me and I'm here. You've got me all wrong. Hasn't he, Slim? He sure has. Don't let that uniform fool you. I'm not a red coat. If you're not a Mountie, who are you? The Raven. Sure. That's what I've been trying to tell you. What do these initials, C.R., stand for? Don't you know? I want to see if you do. I make it a habit never to mention names. You don't look like a gunslinger to me. That's where I use my brains. Where'd you get that uniform? Well, my horse broke his leg. I was afoot for a couple of days when, lo and behold, fate threw a mountie right into my lap. And I suppose he was a good Samaritan and gave you his horse and uniform. Not at all. Fate did that. Meaning what? Take your own meaning. But you can be certain that he'll never show up here. Now listen, McLean. I'm taking all the chances. There's a lot of money offered for me, dead or alive. Now either you're the man I came here to see or you're not. Here's Sparrow's identification card. Can't you see how I can cover you wearing this uniform? That's a swell idea if you can get away with it. Well, why not? These Mounties are on their own. They stay away from their post for six months to a year without reporting. In the meantime, we can clean up and be on our way. Right. Now, what do you say, McLean? 
I think I'll take a chance on you. You're not taking any chance. And if I ever find out you're not with me, you'll leave this country and you won't know a thing about it. That doesn't worry me. I don't expect to spend the rest of my days around here. I'll keep this card for the time being. All right. Let's get down to business. What is it you want me to do? The fur trade in this country is controlled by two men, Foster and Reynolds. Between the two of them, they take out about $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. We want it. We? Who's we? Is somebody else in on this? Forget the we. You're dealing with me. Well, I don't like to go into anything blind. You never can tell what might happen. All you've got to do is carry out my orders. All right, go ahead. Foster and Reynolds are at each other's throats. I want them kept that way. That's why I sent for you. I understand. You want them to knock each other off and then you step in. Right. Now you circulate around as though you were a Mountie. I'll let you know when I need you. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. I'll be seeing you. What do you think? With him back in our play, it'll be a cinch. You're getting all scarred up like a veteran, Bob. That's all right. We fixed him up fine, Ruth. Are you sure he'll be all right, Dr. Martin? Oh, sure. Nothing to worry about. Just a slight flesh wound. Do be careful, Bob. There are only the two of us left now. We'll get along all right. Oh, hello. Hello, Sergeant. How do you do, sir? Welcome to Twin Oaks. Oh, uh, my name is Martin, Dr. Martin. Oh, I'm Sergeant uh, Farrell. I'm glad to meet you. Now that you're here, maybe we'll have a chance for a little peace. <laughs> been a heap of excitement around here. What with the Foster clan and young Reynolds and his friends shooting up one another. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, uh, do you know him? Yes, I met young Reynolds before. Are you all right? Yes, uh, just a scratch, thanks to you. But they haven't seen the last of me. Oh, calm yourself, Bob. Don't get all excited. They had no right saying I stole their furs, and they're not going to get away with it. Now, now, just a minute there. After all, you're such a thing as law and order. I'll be responsible for him, Sergeant. Uh, this is my sister, Ruth. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Reynolds. Well, I hope I'll see more of you. That is, of course, uh, strictly on business. I hope so, too. Take good care of yourself, Bob. You know, you might not get off so lucky and so easy the next time you try to stop a foster bullet. That's quite an arsenal you have there, Doctor. Yes, yes. Guns and hunting are my hobby. But I don't feel quite safe roaming about the woods with all this shooting going on. <laughs> well, you seem to be doing all right. <laughs> Would you like a few? No, thanks. These are birds of peace. You know, it might not be a bad idea to divide these and send some to Foster and Reynolds. <laughs> 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 Doctor, I'd appreciate any help you can give me in settling their troubles. Well, I'd be very glad indeed to be of any assistance in my power, even although it does mean reducing my income. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I'll see you later. All right. Good luck to you. I waited to see you. I didn't want to say too much in front of my brother. But if this thing doesn't stop soon, Foster will get him too. Well, I've been sent up here to settle this matter once and for all. Now, as I understand it, your people are accused of stealing furs belonging to the Foster outfit. Yes, and they blame us for everything bad that ever happened to them. And, of course, you blame them for everything. Well, they do. 
Maybe I'd better go up and ask Foster a few questions. I'd... I'd rather you wouldn't. Why? You look so healthy. I wouldn't want to see you hurt. <laughs> Other peacemakers haven't fared so well. Well, thanks, Miss Reynolds. You're awfully nice yourself. But that's my job. Please be careful. They shoot first and answer questions later. <laughs> now I know I've just got to come back with all the answers. Gun. Now you lead me to Foster. I'm looking by a chap named Foster. You're talking to him. My name's Farrell. Yeah, I know. I'd like a little information. Haven't any to give. How about some advice? None of that either. Well, then I'll give you some. Don't want any. You're a friendly sort of a cuss, aren't you? I might have been. If I hadn't listened to you fellas a few years ago. Well, why don't you try doing a little more listening and less killing? Not a chance. Take a look at these men. These men worked hard from 10 to 16 hours a day when the thermometer registered 30 degrees below zero. And for what? To make money for Bob Reynolds. Yeah. Well, isn't it possible you're mistaken about him? No. When we checked up this spring, we found it had a good season. So the boys decided to take a couple of days to celebrate. And when we came back, what did we find? Our men dead. The fur's gone. And the building's burned to the ground. Any evidence to show that Reynolds had anything to do with it? Who else would? He's the only man who's got to do Just what I'm here to find out. Well, you go your way, and we'll go ours. The law fooled us once, but it won't again. Right, boys? Right. right. Hey, McLean sent word that a fur buyer from the States is buying Reynolds' pelt. That's just what we've been waiting for. Now we'll find out what's what. Yeah. I warn Reynolds, I'm warning all of you. This feud has got to stop. The place to settle your trouble is in court. Say, mister, if we find one of our furs up at that sale, we won't need no court. for both of us.
Hello, Jim. Hello. Great year for trapping, wasn't it? Yeah. For some people. If your furs is as good as Bob's, we can strike up a bargain in no time. Did you buy his? Yep. Paying him top price. Then he's already bought mine, hasn't he, Reynolds? Not all right now. Now, Foster here believes you have some of his furs. Have you any objection to him looking them over? <laughs> Why not at all? Go ahead. Keep in peace, Farrell? Yeah, trying to. I knew I was right. That's my mark. How do you account for this mark? I can't. Seems as though you know what you're talking about, Jim. The only fair thing to do about this is to stop the sale. Because he found one fur among mine? Why, he could have planted that himself. Beating each other up will never settle anything. And until the question of ownership is decided, this sale is off. You put those furs back in the cabin, and you'll have to produce them whenever it's necessary. You're taking a chance leaving them here, aren't you? Don't worry. Nobody will get them away from me. No? Get along now, Foster. I'm in charge here. Boys, let's get going. Have a cigar? No, thanks. You know, that deal this afternoon was handled very nicely by you. If that sale had been completed and the furs moved out of the territory, we might never have been able to put our hands on them. Well, I appreciate all that soft soap, but uh, I'd rather have a little cut in on the profit. I'd like to give you more, but uh, it isn't up to me. Well, then who is it up to? That's my business. But I'll see what I can do for you. Now, you better run along and meet Slim in the Cross Canyon trails. He's got his orders. Now, remember, Slim, we're going to give Bob Reynolds the works there to be no gunplay. I'm following McLean's orders. You'll do what I say. Never mind, McLean. My orders are to get those pelts, and I'm going to get them. You had enough? Yeah. Now, if either one of you two fellows feel the same way, we'll sell it right here. You're okay, Farrell. Whatever you say goes. Now you stay here and wait for my signal. His horse coming. Oh, Sonati. Hi, Sarge. Hi, Fal. Everything quiet, boys? Yes, sir. Well, let's keep it that way then. Get the gun. Take the furs out. You three boys help them. Come on.
All right, you two get outside and give us a hand. I told you there's nothing to worry about. I'm sure he's on the level. And he's plenty smart, too. That deal he pulled off this afternoon was worth $100,000 to us. And right now, he's most likely up in the canyon with the boys, helping with the pellets. Well, you may be right. But nevertheless, I'm going to take a little round. I'm not going to take any chance. Ah, oh, the birds have been stolen in the cabin. What? More of Foster's work, eh? That settles it. Tell the men to be at the regular place. I'd meet you or Bob. There's some things I want to explain. A little too late for explanation. Oh, now, you're making a mistake. The first mistake I made was believing you when you told me you'd put an end to this feud. That's exactly what I'm doing. How? By letting Jim Foster rob my brother? It wasn't Jim Foster. It was McLean. McLean? <laughs> Men, I called you all here to tell you we're going after Foster, to get back our furs. Listen, boys, it's that Molly that's pulled this trick on us.
men to cease firing. It's too late, Bounty. We're going to finish this here and now. You've got to listen to me. Behind all this, Foster never stole those things. There may be something in what you say, sis. Close the fire, boys! Close the fire, boys! Both your trap lines and Foster's were raided last winter under McLean's orders. Why? So that you two would carry on the feud started years ago by your father. That served as a perfect cover up for his fur stealing activities. When he had it going good, he wanted to make sure it didn't die down. If that's true, why don't you arrest McLean? Because McLean's not alone in promoting this feud. And until I find out who's behind him, I can't make any move in the open. Where are the furs hidden? They're in a canyon about five miles up in the hills. Well, maybe we ought to take a few of the boys up, huh? No, uh-uh. I want to make it appear as though you two are still bitter enemies. It's the only way we can find out who's behind McLean. Say, that's a good idea. Ruth, see as the boys get back to the cabin without any more shooting, will you? I'll get my horse and join you. I knew you were fine. I'll never doubt my first hunches about men again. Your furs are in that cabin. Wait here for just two minutes and then come on in. Why wait? There's a couple of guards in there that need attention. Oh, I never take any chances with my skins. I brand them all. Look at that. Hey, that's a fine coat, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, I've got dozens like that. I'll bet you have. I wonder who's behind all this fur stealing. I'm in favor of forcing the truth out of McLean. That's a good idea. Jim Foster. What happened? Where's 
Bob, kill me. He's in the cabin, in the canyon. He's in... <coughs> Henry, get him to Dr. Martin. Out my part of the bargain. Now, what about you? Don't worry, old man. I'll see that you're taken care of. I just haven't had time to get down to it yet. Well, I want to get this thing settled up and get out of here. This business of masquerading as a mountie's got me all jumpy. Say, who is this higher up you always have to see? Let me talk to him. They just brought Jim Foster in. He's badly hurt. Took him over to Doc Martin. He said he didn't want anybody in there. Oh, Sergeant, I'm, I'm glad you're here. He's unconscious, poor fellow. I'm doing all I can for him. Did he say who shot him? He regained consciousness for a few minutes. He accused Bob Reynolds. Wait, where are you going? I'm going after Bob Reynolds. Oh, no, 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 please. No, he might be desperate. The poor boy's liable to shoot, to kill. I'll bring him in. Hello, Bromley. Bromley? Yes, Bromley. Alias the Raven. There you are. You must be mistaken. Who are you? What would you say if I told you that my name was Gail Farrell? Well, now, it's only one thing I could say. Well, suppose I approve it. A couple of weeks ago, when you knocked me out of the mountains and changed clothes, there's one thing that you forgot. This identification card that all Mounties carry. Would you like to look at it? No, I've seen lots of them. Would you like to see it? This man is a killer. Wanted in Canada as well as the United States.
Well, uh, where were you standing? I was standing... Uh, it, it seemed to come from that window. Here, Bob, please drink some more coffee. I wonder what happened to Foster. Well, he's a Dr. Martin. Maybe, unless someone else planted those birds. Miss Reynolds, you better get Bob home and uh, keep him out of sight for a while. doing here? Dr. Martin, I need your help. I'm going to keep undercover for a few days until reinforcements arrive. In the meanwhile, I'd appreciate it if you'd keep me posted as to developments here. 
It is not my policy, sir, to aid lawbreakers or men masquerading as police officers. Oh, but that was just a frame-up. I... Wait a minute, just a moment. Just who are you? Gail Farrell. Yeah, but what about that other fellow who says he is Gail Farrell? I don't know who he is. Probably one of McLean's men. McLean? Yes, he's a man responsible for this feud. McLean is a very dangerous man. He'll never rest until he'll get you. Now, I believe that that idea of yours of um, staying undercover is excellent. I'll do all that I can to help you. Well, that's very kind of you, Doctor. Well, you seem to be the only one here that I can trust. As a law-abiding citizen, I esteem it as a privilege. Now, tell me. Uh, do you know of any place where you think you could hide out for a few days? Yes, there's a cabin at the end of Dark Canyon. I'll stay there until I hear from you. Oh, fine. Fine. And uh, I'll keep things going here. Good. Oh, uh, by the way, Doctor, I noticed one of your guns is missing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, you see, the doors are always open. And the boys have a habit of dropping in and borrowing one, even without telling me about it. Now, you are here. And I'll contact you at the very first opportunity. Oh, thank you. Thank you again, Doctor. Yes? Speaking. I've got good news. Farrell is hiding out in the cabin at the end of Dark Canyon. How do you know so much? I sent him. Oh, all right. Uh, you head out and get him. You bet. There's his horse. Hey, Edgar. See anything of another Mounty around here lately? Nope. You're the first Mounty I ever saw. That is, if you are a Mountie. Are one. You can tell by the uniform, can't you? Hey, that's kind of pretty, ain't it? Yeah, I kind of like it myself. <laughs> well, see you later, thanks. If he's inside, I'll get him through the window. If he's not, you get him when he comes along. Keep your eyes wide open. This might be a trap. Hey, right where you are. Now throw those guns away. One man knew I was out here, and he's a higher up in your outfit. Now get moving. What's up? I didn't expect you back so soon. I didn't expect your men to see. What's that for? 
Oh, I think you know. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 